What's happening, hardscapers? We have a client problem that we're gonna be solving here for their front entrance. Let's get into this. So this client called me up and they had their steps, front steps just completely falling apart. Two steps at the front and two steps uh, after a small landing here completely falling apart. It's a complete lawsuit waiting to happen. That glue is just not adhering properly to those caps, so they just fall over. Somebody twists their ankle, breaks their leg, whatever it might be. So we're coming in and fixing. And here's what we do when we go about fixing something like this. So we're gonna be replacing these two steps, as well as those two steps, and relaying this landing here. We're gonna cut the curve and instead we're going to be using mini creative from tackle block and these six foot 16 inch tread natural stone steps caps so you can see how here how much that is just collapsing in on itself leaning forward it's all built on stone dust caps are just completely coming off so we're going to go ahead fix this up as well so we've removed the stone dust these steps were built on just complete Crap, stone dust, never use it. We don't use it. Took it out, compacted the subsoil, installed a non-woven geotextile, and then compacted a gravel, three inch lifts, three to four inch, to get about seven to eight inches of base. And now you notice we are using our BR 1570. This is good for about three and a half inches of material. So that's why we compact this in lifts of three to four inches, no more. And we want to make sure that our A gravel is nice and moist. We've got water added to it. Not too much, but not too little. It can't be dry. So what we'll do is we'll take the height of the pavers, which is final grade, and to the height of this stoop, and we will divide that into three. So we will go, I believe it's 19 inches. What we'll do is we'll go six and a half. So we'll go six and a half to the first step, then 13 inches to the next step, and then 19 and a half to the final step. And then we will kind of work with that final half inch extra that we have. We'll maybe cut it in half to a quarter inch to a quarter inch to the final one as well. Cut that in half, make it as close to six and a half as possible. So whatever the total amount of our rise is going to be, and we split that difference, and however we're gonna plan that step, in this case, we ended up going six inches to that first step, six Six inches to that next step and then six and a half to that final stoop landing so that's 18 and a half inches so to set our screed bar we went from top of stoop to top of screed bar that 18 and a half inches plus however much our buried course is going to be which was an additional four and a half inches and that means that's negative 23 inches if we zero at the top of stoop down to top of screed bar or we can just measure down and then we're going to level these screed bars out because we want our steps to be completely level possibly with a very slight slope forward to allow any water to drain off and then what we're doing here is we're going ahead with our buried course this is our first level and this is the hardest part with any wall any step is just getting these completely level once they're level and you can see that we are using a dead blow hammer with a torpedo level to make sure that they're level front to back left to right as well as from one piece to another and then using a tape measure to make sure that we're completely square with the foundation if this was a longer run or a retaining wall we would be using a string line just to make sure that we're completely square or parallel but in in this case, I'm just using a tape measure to measure off the foundation to make sure that the measurement from one side of the step to the other is completely the same. So as you can see, that's the outline of our step as well as our second step there so that we know we can just start stacking these to create that final step. So for that initial step, it's just gonna be one course of these six inch blocks. These are gonna be partially buried and then a two inch cap is gonna go on top to give us another six inch step. And then our final second step there is just being built up. We have a couple cuts to do here as well as some rock facing to those ed pieces. So that's why they're actually overhanging just a little bit there so that we can chisel them, and make sure that they got that rock face. All right, here we are with our pyramid steps right now. Now it's time for the caps. So essentially what we've done is we've cut in our returns. We had one cut on that end, one cut on the same side on that end. <laughs> And same thing for this one, just fitting it in as good as possible to get that return so that the caps can sit nicely, no rocking, as well as to fill in the sides as well. We've got the sides rock face, so one, two, 
three, four. Corner units that have been chiseled rock face now so that you do get that side there as opposed to getting a smooth side. So that's how it should look when it comes off. And now it's just time to get our caps installed. So we've got six foot caps, 16 inch treads. So that is pretty much the size of that top cap. We'll have one cut and then we will have a return coming this way and then a return over there coming that way and then we'll fill in this spot with the same cut piece of a six foot cap for there. I believe that's five foot, like eight inches up there. So that's the game plan, Let's see how it goes. Here's the final product. So what we did was, uh, initially I was going to make these steps straight, but what that would do is coming up this driveway here, the entrance would be over here. So you would actually have to come up and then come this way and then enter. But keeping this curve here opens it up that you're coming up the driveway and you can step up right onto this. Uh, Try to cut it to the stones. And with this, this is 16 inches minus, we actually cut a curve to match this wall in this step. So it's a nice uh, curved all the way. We cut along here and we cut along here and then chiseled that to get that rock face so that it's a nice rock face all along. Same thing to this one. Lifted and relayed this. This was built completely on stone dust. And we all know if you follow my channel, I hate stone dust. It just acts as a sponge and soaks everything up and will lead to failure. Will lead to the degradation of the underneath of your stone with that moisture just sitting there. As well as efflorescence and a whole bunch of other issues. So uh, stone dust, we just scraped out the top layer. Client knows that this is a temporary fix minus the steps. We did build those on a gravel. So three inch lifts, compaction, and then we do have more than a buried course under each step. Uh, the steps are actually built together. We rock faced the sides of those. We rock faced or chiseled the caps here as well and on the edges. So what we ended up doing was six foot across, 16 inch treads. We love nice big treads for our clients to be able to step on and have tons of room. We ended up going about six and a half, six and a half, or about six, six, and then six and a half up. Uh, going six, six just helps us to tie our steps together when we're building them without having to uh, build this one up and then have to backfill with gravel to raise that next one. Essentially, they're just built as a single unit step together. Adds a little bit of strength, but also makes it a little bit easier as well. We ended up going 12 inch treads on the side here, just so we could open this area up as much as possible. Client says these railings are eventually gonna go. So as much as we can expand that area outwards, and then they can put a planter on either side here so nobody steps down onto those. But essentially, this is our fixed area. Gotta clean things up a bit, but that's about it. Hey, I hope this video's helped you in some way. If you do have a question at all, leave it in the comment section below. I'll respond to anybody and everybody. Like this video if you found it helpful for whatever reason, and subscribe to this YouTube channel for more art game content like this. Thank you so much for watching.